Good luck. Merhaba arkadaşlar. Hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Tilburg Üniversitesi'de işletme ve sosyal bilimler bölümleri hakkında her şeyi Melis ve Yozin'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes, Yozin, the stage is yours now. Thank you. Merhaba everyone. Welcome to this presentation about studying in the Netherlands and specifically at Tilburg University. My name is Yuzin Janssen. I'm external account manager for Tilburg University and I will be hosting this session for you today. And luckily I will not be doing this alone. I have a current international Turkish student here with me and maybe Melis, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hello everyone. I'm Melis. Uh, I'm from Istanbul, Turkey, and I will be answering your questions in the chat. You can ask me questions both in Turkish and English. I'm a second year bachelor student in Tilburg University, and I'm studying cognitive science and artificial intelligence. Yeah, thank you, Melis. Yeah, so as Melis already said, please feel free to ask all questions that you have in the chat. Um, I will give the main presentation and Melis tries to answer as many questions as possible. After the presentation, there is also room for a live Q&A. So yeah, that's what we're here for. So please ask as many questions as you want. This is an overview of the presentation. Uh, first, I will quickly delve into why you should consider studying in the Netherlands. Then I will move on to Tilburg University and the English taught programs that we offer, both bachelor's programs as well as master's programs. Then I will move on to the mission requirements and how to apply to Tilburg University, after which I will talk about cost of living, part-time jobs and tuition fees, and then there is room for the live Q&A. Um, can everybody see my presentation? That's my first thing that I would like to know. Is it? A, can everybody see it? I think so. Okay, so let's get started with why should you uh, 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 study in the Netherlands? Well, there are several reasons why you should consider studying in the Netherlands. The first of all is that all Dutch universities offer English taught programs. So no matter what study program you're interested in, you will always find an English taught study program in the Netherlands at some of our universities. So there are a wide variety of study programs that you can choose from. The second reason why you should consider studying in the Netherlands is the fact that the Netherlands is one of the best countries in the world to do business. And especially since the Brexit, a lot of international and multinational companies moved from London to Amsterdam, making sure that a lot of our graduates, both Dutch as international graduates, find a job in the Netherlands after graduation. And I think at the moment, according to Forbes, we're number four in the world of best countries to do business in. Um, all the Dutch research universities belong to the best 2% of universities worldwide. We're all included in the Times Higher Education University Rankings 2021, and we're all part of the top 250. So no matter what university you're interested in in the Netherlands or what study program you're interested in, yeah, you will get high quality, innovative education. Um, what is important for you to know is that all the Dutch universities are accredited by the NVEO, which is the Dutch Flemish Accreditation Association, and and the NVEO makes sure that we meet European quality standards when it comes to offering English taught programs in the Netherlands. Another reason why you should consider studying in the Netherlands is the fact that we offer very competitive tuition fees. So for example, if you have an EU passport, you pay around 2,200 euros per academic year. When you have a non-EU passport, you pay around 9,000 euros for the bachelor's programs and 14,000 euros for the master's programs per academic year, which is a lot cheaper when you compare it to, for example, studying in the United States or in the United Kingdom. Um, another reason why you should consider studying in the Netherlands is the fact that everybody speaks English. So no matter, uh, you don't need to learn Dutch, no matter where you are in the Netherlands, everybody speaks English. And I think I'm also speaking for Melis, uh, when we're walking through the city center, um, you don't need to know any Dutch. Of course, you're more than welcome to study Dutch, but that's not mandatory. And another reason that I found very important as a girl is that it's a very safe country. We're a very inclusive, diverse uh, community. So for example, if I cycle home at night after a party or late in the evening, nobody bothers me. And it's also a very diverse and inclusive community in the sense that we host more than 160 nationalities in the country from a wide variety of cultural backgrounds. So you will definitely find a place in the Netherlands. 
So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Dutch education system, but we have two types of universities in the Netherlands. On the one hand, you will have universities of applied sciences that offer more professional practice education. And on the other hand, we have research universities who offer academic education. Tilburg University, so the university that Melissa and I are representing is a research university. Uh, research universities offer academic higher education and they're the highest achievable universities in the Netherlands. Uh, bachelor's programs at a research university are three years and normally after graduating from a bachelor's program you do a one or two year master's program in which you really specialize. Um, the approach is very academical, you learn how to think critically, how to work independently, how to write a convincing argument, etc. So it's very academic and yeah, most, mostly individual education. On the other hand, you have universities of applied sciences and they really offer a four year bachelor's program after which you immediately transition into the labor market. Um, so it's a more professional practice education. Um, higher education at a University of Applied Sciences is a, little, is a little bit more traditional in the sense that you have mostly classical education where you sit in class with 30 students and you have a lot of internships throughout the study program. So it's more hands-on education. At a research university, you normally only have one to two internships in a program. Uh, what makes it difficult, though both types of universities, is that, for example, some programs you can only study at a University of Applied Sciences, such as nursing or physiotherapy or uh, fine arts, dance academy, etc. And some programs you can only study at a research university, such as biochemistry or philosophy. Some programs you can study at both types of universities, such as um, communication. Then you really need to decide, OK, what do you find interesting about the topic and what type of education fits your interests and career ambitions? For example, if you study communication at a University of Applied Sciences, you learn how to design a website or how to write a press release. Whereas at a research university, you also learn what is the best way to present communication, linguistically or psychologically speaking. So those are the two different types of universities that we have in the world, uh, in the Netherlands, I'm sorry. In case you have any questions about this, please let me know. Let's move on to Tilburg University. Well, Tilburg is located in the south of the Netherlands in the so-called Brainport region. And the Brainport region is Europe's top technology region and companies such as ASML, Philips and Tesla are all located in this region. Uh, Tilburg University is located in the city of Tilburg. And as you can see on the slide, um, we have a very strong collaboration with, for example, the Technical University of Eindhoven, which is located in the Brainport region, as well as those international and multinational companies. Um, as you can see on the slide, we're very conveniently located within the Netherlands, but also within Europe. So, for example, if you want to explore the rest of the Netherlands when you're living in Tilburg or maybe even another major European city, then Tilburg, you know, yeah, Tilburg itself is a very good starting point. And we have two major airports nearby. Amsterdam Airport is only an hour and a half away from Tilburg and Eindhoven Airport is only 30 minutes away. So for example, if you wanna travel home in the, in the summer or winter holidays or maybe in the fall break, yeah, you have a very good starting point. And lots of our students decide to use weekend trips to, for example, explore Paris or Berlin or sometimes even go to London. So I think it's a very good and nice way to explore the rest of Europe. Tilburg has around uh, 200,000 inhabitants and more than 28,000 are students. And this is because we not only have Tilburg University in the city of Tilburg, but also a dance academy, a rock academy, and a University of Applied Sciences. So Tilburg is a very international and student-oriented city with lots of things to do. And I think Melissa can later on in the presentation share her own experiences, what it's like to live in Tilburg. We have a lot of bars and restaurants. We have one of the best concert halls in the city. We have musea, we have theaters. Um, if COVID is not around us, also a lot of festivals. So there are a lot of things for you to do besides studying. 
Um, a little bit more about Tilburg University. Uh, Tilburg University was founded in 1927 as a business school, but our founders soon realized that in order to become a good business person, you also need to develop your intercultural and communication skills and your soft skills. And that is why our university soon expanded to a university that focuses on the social sciences in a broader sense. And that is why we now have six schools on one modern and green campus, as you can hopefully see on the slides in this presentation. Our campus is beautiful and we're actually one of the only Dutch research universities that has a campus in the Netherlands. Um, our motto is understanding society and this means that we really look for students that are not afraid to look critically towards society but that also really want to improve and enhance society. So in all of our study programs, no matter if you're studying business or uh, philosophy or psychology, you always have this social responsibility component embedded in your study program. And we really try to educate students to make a contribution to society. Um, at the moment, we have around uh, 10 English, oh, sorry, 14 English taught bachelor's programs and more than 40 English taught master's programs. Uh, we're a middle sized university. Uh, we have around two, uh, 20,000 um, students, of which more than 110 different nationalities. So you will definitely not be the only international student when you decide to study at Tilburg. So why should you consider Tilburg University instead of all the other universities that we have in the Netherlands? Well, the first two I already touched upon. Uh, the third reason is, is that we ex score extremely high in international rankings, especially the subject rankings when it comes to business, economics, psychology and law. Um, at our university, you will not only be studying, there are a lot of extracurricular activities uh, that you can take part in. For example, all our study programs have their own study association. Um, this association is run by students of a particular study program and they organize, uh, for example, exam preparation weeks and study trips and uh, parties. We also have student associations, which are run by students of different programs. So in these kind of student associations, you can get to know people from different study programs and they can be like the traditional fraternities and sororities. They can go uh, about sports or model United Nations. We have a debating club. We have Serve the City, which is a voluntary project. We have European Student Network who we'll organize a lot of activities for international students, such as theme parties and uh, city trips. So there are a lot of different things for you to do besides your studies. We also have a very strong uh, student counseling and support system in place. So in case you, for example, have family related issues or dyslexia and you need more time for your exam, or um, in case you keep failing in class, you can first go to the academic advisor of your study program. And that person is your first contact point in case you have any questions or run into any issues. And if necessary, we can direct you to student psychologists or student deans. So this is something to keep in mind that we're definitely there for you as a student and that you're not only a number at our university. Um, at our university, you can choose to study a language besides your studies. When you decide to start your studies, you receive electronic language vouchers, which you can use to do two language courses for free. So, for example, if you want to study Russian or Chinese or French or German, you can do that for free at our university or maybe even Dutch if you want to learn a little bit of Dutch. Uh, we also have a career center on campus. They are there for you for individual counseling, assisting you how to find, for example, an internship or an entry level job. And they will also organize a lot of career events. Uh, we also have a sports center next to campus for only 130 euros per year. You can do unlimited sports. You can choose from more than 60 different sports. Uh, so no matter what you're interested in, you will probably find it at our sports center. So in case you love sports, then I highly recommend you to check out our sports center. And I already see a lot of co questions coming in. That's great. Um, most of the questions are related to study programs and admission requirements. And I will delve into them later on when I talk about those topics. And I see, yeah, all our, our all master's programs in English, Sema asks, we also have master's programs in Dutch, but most of our master's programs, more than 40 are fully taught in English. So that's good for you to know you don't need to learn any Dutch. And the other questions that I'm talking about will, yeah, will be answered later on in this presentation.
So a little bit more about our international environment. Um, I already said that we have more than 110 uh, different nationalities walking around on campus. At the moment, we have more than uh, 4,200 international students. And on the slide, I put the student intake of this September. So on the slide, you can see um, which international students started studying at Tilburg University this September, so last month. And as you can see, 5% of our students uh, are currently from Turkey. So you will definitely meet people maybe even from your own city. Um, at Silverk University, not only our student population is very diverse, but also our staff. More than 40% of our PhD students, lecturers and professors are from abroad as well. And in case you're planning to start a study program at Tilburg University, more than 30% of your fellow students in class will also be from abroad. Um, I see a question coming in from Merve. Thank you very much. Very good question. Is a special system for students in place for disabilities? Are the classes suitable for the physically disabled people? Yes, very good question. And yes, that's the case. In case you have a physical disability, you normally contact the student dean before you start your studies. And then we arrange practical matters for you. And then, for example, all your classes will be on the ground floor so that you know, don't have to take an elevator or the stairs. Uh, so that will all be arranged then for you. Good question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, when you decide to start your studies at Tilburg and especially a bachelor's program, you have the opportunity to become an international student again in your third year of your bachelor's program because then you have room to go on exchange for half a year and study at a different university in a different country. Uh, we have more than 200 partner universities worldwide, so no matter where you want to study, we probably have a partner university in the country that you want to study. And on the slide, you will see the most prominent exchange partners that we have. Then a little bit more about the rankings. Um, as I said before, Tilburg University scores extremely high in international subject rankings, specifically in the fields of business, economic psychology, and law. In case you want to know exactly what rankings apply to your field of study, I would recommend you to go to tilburguniversity.edu slash rankings, and then you see per field of study what rankings were included in and what our score is. Then a little bit more about housing before I move on to our English top programs. And I already saw some questions uh, coming in about housing. Uh, Tilburg University does not offer housing uh, itself. There are two options to look for housing in Tilburg. The first one is reserved accommodation by the university. And this means that we have rented some um, student accommodation from private housing owners and we reserve them specifically for international students. Um, in case you are conditionally admitted in April already, you have the opportunity to apply for reserve accommodation by the university. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have enough housing for all students that uh, start their studies at Tilburg, so you really need to be on time and register on time for the reserved accommodation. Another option is to look for housing yourself on the private market, and then you, for example, use Facebook groups or housing agencies to look for housing. Um, because Tilburg is a very popular student city and because our university has growing has been growing immensely in the past couple of years, there's a very high demand for student housing and currently we have a shortage in student housing. So you really need to start looking for housing in advance, preferably even five months before you start your studies. I know that sounds like a very long time before you start your studies, but we noticed that students that want to start their studies in September 2022, for example, need to start looking in April 2022 already. Um, our university and the municipality are currently working together to build new student accommodation, which is currently in process. But yeah, as you know, with construction buildings, it might take yeah one to two years before those rooms are actually finalized. And I hope that at the end of the presentation, Meliska maybe share tips and tricks how she found housing in Tilburg. So in case this is unclear, please let me know and then I will touch upon it in the live Q&A. So let's move on to our English dot programs. Well, as I said before, we have 14 English dot bachelor's programs and more than 60 English dot master's programs. So I, I, I unfortunately do not have time to discuss them all. Um, I will briefly go over them, but in case you want to know more in-depth information about any study program, please ask me in the chat or visit uh, the Tilburg University website for more information. So let's get started with our English dot bachelor's programs. 
Um, our international bachelor's programs are fully English taught, so you don't need to learn any Dutch. You don't need to worry about that. Um, our um, education is very inter yeah, intercultural, multicultural, so at least 30% of your fellow students will be from abroad as well. Um, education in the Netherlands is very interactive. This means that you're not just sitting in class, listening to a professor and taking notes. Uh, that's just a very small portion of Dutch education. At Tilburg University, most of your education takes place in small seminar groups with 20 to 25 students. So in those uh, classes, you will have your uh, discussions, your presentation, your group projects. Um, you need to be self-disciplined and individualized. So for example, you need to prepare your literature that you need to read beforehand. And you need to prepare your assignments beforehand. beforehand. You really need to yeah, um, stay on top of your, yeah, stay on top of your game. I'm not sure if that's the right expression, but because you have between 18 to 22 uh, hours of classes, you need to dedicate the other 20 to 22 hours per week to self-studying. So you need to be self-disciplined for this. Um, yeah, and as I said before, it's a very fun mixture of different ways in which we teach and test you, such as lectures, seminars, group projects, writing uh, evidence-based academic papers, writing like the traditional exams. Um, so that's, I think, a very useful for you to know. Uh, one thing that I want to explain is something very Dutch, and it's the binding study advice. And this is only applicable for students that are interested in a bachelor's program. In case you're interested in a master's program, this information is not relevant for you. Uh, a binding study advice means that you need to obtain at least 42 out of the 60 course credits in the first year in order to transition to the second year. Uh, this translates to passing at least 70% of your courses in the first year in order to continue to the second year. If you fail to obtain those 42 course credits in the first year, you unfortunately need to stop with the program and you cannot re-enroll in a similar program in the Netherlands in the next three years. So it's more like you need to prove yourself in the first year. Um, please do not worry too much of, about the binding study advice. Most students, and especially international students, do not have an issue with passing the binding study advice, but it is a system that is in place by law, implemented by law in Dutch education systems. Uh, on the slide, you can see our English taught bachelor's programs. Uh, as you can see, we have 14, and with their, uh, we have a variety of business programs, economics programs, artificial intelligence, the study program Liz is studying, econometrics, law, and theology. Um, I want to highlight two so that you have an idea of the kind of study programs that we offer. And the first one that I want to highlight is our bachelor's program in global law. This is a unique program in the world in which you learn how to compare and contrast different legal systems in order to solve very complex legal cases. Um, so you really learn how to navigate through the different legal systems that we have in the world. Um, an example that I always give is Facebook. Uh, Facebook had a, had a lawsuit against them because of their privacy regulations and how they deal with their data. How do you deal with such a legal case? Because it's one company, Facebook, it's one lawsuit against them regarding their privacy regulations, but it's involving so many countries and therefore so many legal systems that you need people that have knowledge of these different legal systems in order to consult either for the or organization or government that uh, sues Facebook or to help Facebook how to best get out of this um, legal case. So that is a unique program that we offer at Tilburg University. Another unique program that we offer at Tilburg University is data science. Data science is a joint degree program with the Eindhoven University of Technology. And this means that after graduating from data science, you get two diplomas, one from Tilburg University and one from Eindhoven University of Technology. You will have your more technical courses, so data mining, data collection, at Eindhoven University, so you will have 50% of your classes in Eindhoven at the Technical University of Eindhoven, and you will have the more business-related programs at Tilburg University. So, for example, how can you use data science to consult for a company or to help them launch a new product, a product on the market? So these are just two examples of study programs that we offer. In case you would like to know more, please let me know so that we can discuss it later on in the live Q&A. So let's move on to our master's programs. Um, our master's programs are generally one year, um, but you also have the opportunity sometimes to do a research master's, which is two years, an extended master's, which in which you put half a year or a full year 
um, to your master's program. You can do double degrees. So similar to the joint degree that I just explained with data science, you can do two master's programs at two universities in two years and then obtain two diplomas. Uh, or in case you want to go into research and, for example, uh, become a PhD student, then you can do a research master's. Um, our research masters, general masters, double degree masters, and extended masters are all fully taught in, uh, in English. So again, no need for you to learn any Dutch, uh, Dutch. And yet there are a lot of different programs that you can choose from. So I will not delve into all of them. I put all the programs on the slide, but I will just highlight a couple. Um, so as you can see, these are the master's programs that we offer in business and management. And for example, in case you're really interested in marketing, you can choose, for example, for the master's in marketing management, in which you learn how to become a traditional marketing manager for an international company, or you can choose for the marketing analytics master's. And this program is really um, going into data science and analytical part of marketing. So for example, Google Analytics. And then we have our master's programs in economics and econometrics. And what you can already see here on the slide is that when you decide to do a master's in economics at Tilburg University, that you can decide to specialize in a specific track. So our master's program in economics gives you the opportunity to, for example, specialize in law and economics, public policy, sustainable development, financial economics, and behavioral economics. Then we have our master's programs in the fields of communication, digital sciences, culture, and philosophy. Um, in case you're really interested in communication, you can choose for our master's program in communication and information sciences and become a yeah, general communications uh, advisor or specialist. But another option is that you have is that within the master's in communication and information sciences, you can choose a specific track. And you can choose between business communication and digital media, new media design, or uh, communication and cognition. And I already see a lot of questions coming in about admission requirements. Thank you so much. Um, I will discuss them later on in this presentation. These are the master's programs that we offer in the field of law and public administration. Uh, one unique program that we offer is law and technology. Um, as you probably know, our technology is developing very fast. Think of drones, for example. But our legal systems are not catching up fast enough. For example, if I would buy a drone as a private person and I would, for example, film my holidays and I accidentally film people that I don't know and that did not give permission to be filmed. How do you deal with that legally? Because I'm not planning to use the movie for any commercial um, reasons. It's just my own holiday movie, but I'm filming people who didn't give permission. That is one of the case studies that you will be discussing in a master's program such as law and technology. These are the master's programs that we offer in the fields of social and behavioral sciences. And as you can see, we're focusing mainly on psychology and sociology and on organization studies. Um, in case you're interested in doing a PhD position, so in case you're interested in an academic career, then our research master in social and behavioral sciences or our research master in psychology might be a good fit for you. And these are examples of two-year research master's programs in which you focus heavily on research and on internships related to research together with professors and lecturers from your study program. And after those um, two years, you get a very, yeah, you have very good opportunities to do a PhD position at a renowned university. And I know that at, no, at the Research Master in Social and Behavioral Sciences, 50% um, of the students that graduated immediately found a position at a university as a PhD student. So you'll have good career opportunities. Uh, these are the master's programs that we offer in data science and artificial intelligence. One unique one is our master's program in data science and society. And this master's program is meant for students that do not have any data science background, but that would love to transition from their current field of study to data science. Um, this master's program yeah, helps you to become a data, data science specialist, data scientist in one year. And within the master's, you can choose between four different tracks. And which track to choose depends on what bachelor's program you obtained or what bachelor's diploma and what interests you have. Then our last master's program, this is our master's program in Christianity and Society. This is a very specific and small master's program for students that are very interested in religious studies and want to connect that to politics and policy. 
So in case you are interested in different religions in the world and you love learning more about them and linking them to what is happening in society nowadays, so linking past to present, then our theology masters might be a good fit for you. Um, yeah, I think these, the, the topics that are now on the slide are already discussed. Um, in case you're a very ambitious student and you would love to do additional things, there are opportunities for you to do, for example, a double degree. So obtain an additional master's diploma at another university in another country. Um, for students that are interested in a master's program offered by the Tilburg School of Economics and Management or the Tilburg School of Social and Behavioral Sciences can in some cases extend their master's with six months. So then they have a one year master's program and extend it with six months in which they either gain international study work or research experience and you get a lot of skills development workshops. Then for students that are interested in a master's program offered by the Tilburg School of Economics and Management, you, uh, please know that we're part of the QTEM network. This is a very renowned network of international universities and companies. Um, in case you decide to do a master's program at the Tilburg School of Economics and Management, and you want to become part of this QTEM network, you can yeah, extend your master's with one year in which you do half a year of studies and half a year of internship at a renowned international company. And it's really quantitative based. And uh, this is very interesting in case you want to explore uh, several companies that you want to work for, or maybe become a student in a different country for half a year, because you have the opportunities to study internationally. Then what can you do after graduation? I already saw some questions coming in about career opportunities um, after you graduate. Um, in case you have a non-EU passport, you can apply for the one year search visa. This is a visa that you can very easily apply to once you graduate from a Dutch university. And with this one year search visa, or we call it the orientation year visa, you can stay in the Netherlands for one year and look for jobs. Uh, within that one year, you do not yet need to have a work permit. So for example, if you graduate in July 2023, you apply for the, for the search year visa and you get a job at ASML in September. That one year that you're going to be working for ASML, ASML does not yet need to apply for a work permit for you. So for companies, it becomes more beneficial to hire you as a non-EU student. Of course, after that one year, the company that you're working for yeah, needs to apply for a work permit for you. But at least you have some time to prove yourself. Uh, on average, Tilburg University graduates find a job within three months after graduation. Of course, it depends a little bit on the study program that you're doing. And as I said before, we have a career service center on campus that can assist you in individual coaching, um, how to, yeah, personal workshops, such as how to write the perfect resume, how to prepare for a job interview. Uh, we have very strong links with the international labor market and with the labor market in the Netherlands. So we can also help you transition to the labor market. Um, yeah, there's a large job market in the Benelux, so Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. So I don't think you will have issues finding a job, but it really depends on the sector that you're going to work in. I hope this is clear. If not, please let me know in the chat. I'm quickly scrolling through the chat to see if I've discussed every question that is related to the topics that I just discussed. Let's see. Yeah, I see Kubra. I hope I answered your question with the work permits. So with the search your visa, you do not yet need to have a work permit. But after the one year visa expires, yeah, the company that you work for needs to apply for a work visa for you. So let's move on to admission requirements and application procedures. And I see that most questions uh, are about admission requirements. So let's get started. Um, in case you're interested in a bachelor's program offered at Tilburg University, we always look whether or not the high school diploma that you obtain is equivalent to the Dutch VWO pre-university high school diploma. For most of our bachelor's program, with the exception of our bachelor's program in data science, we accept the Lycée Diplomatie, I hope I pronounce it correctly, with a diploma Puani of at least 80% from a general Lycée. For some of our programs, uh, you need to, ah, I see thumbs up, so that means I pronounced it correctly, thank you. <laughs> um, for the programs related to business, such as international business administration, economics, entrepreneurship, and cognitive science and artificial intelligence, you will need to achieve at least an 80 for mathematics. Um, for, econom uh, for a bachelor's program in econ uh, econometrics and mathematical economics, you need to complete the AP calculus exam as, uh, um, as well, so on top of, uh, achieving at least an 80 for mathematics. 
Um, in case you're interested in a bachelor's program offered by the Tilburg School of Social and Behavioral Sciences, such as psychology, global management of social issues, international sociology, or human resource studies, you need to have had mathematics up until your final year in high school and received a passing grade. But the passing grade, there's no specific score related to that. In case you're going to obtain another diploma, please know that on our website you can find a full list of accepted diplomas. So in case your diploma is not listed on these slides, please do not worry. We accept more than 40 international diplomas, so I would recommend you to type in Diploma Requirements Tilburg University and you will find a list of all the diplomas that we accept. Um, in case you're uh, going to obtain an international baccalaureate diploma, so the IB, we ask for at least a full IB with a minimum overall point, uh, uh, overall score of 24 points. Uh, and only the full IB is accepted, so no set, not separate IB certificates. And for some bachelor's programs, we ask for a specific mathematics course. So for example, in case you're interested in a bachelor's program in econ econometrics and operations research or data science, we ask for analysis and approaches higher level. In case you're interested in any of our business or science, cognitive science and artificial intelligence programs, we ask for analysis and approaches standard level or applications and interpretation higher level. Um, in case you have applications and interpretation standard level, you, for example, have access to our bachelor's programs offered by the Tilburg School of Social and Behavioral Sciences and programs such as theology, liberal arts and sciences and online culture. In case you have an American or high, uh, Turkish high school diploma, please know that we accept both diplomas in case you're going to obtain four relevant advanced placement subjects with at least a score of three. Um, so that is something important. Uh, there are several AP courses that we do not accept, such as AP Studio Art. Um, I think AP Research is not, AP Seminar is not accepted. So please check our website to see which AP courses we do not accept. Yeah, and the four is the minimum re relevant and advanced placement subjects that we accept. So make sure that you have four. And similar to what I just discussed, several of our programs have additional requirements when it comes to mathematics. So in case you're interested in economics, entrepreneurship, business, cognitive science, or econometrics, one of your AP courses needs to be calculus. And um, yeah, please make sure that you meet the requirements because the requirements at Tilburg University are fairly strict. So let's move on to our English language requirements. Uh, because our programs are fully taught in English, you need to prove your English language proficiency. Um, in general, you need to submit a language certificate. And for the bachelors, we accept the academic IELTS, the TOEFL internet-based test, or the Cambridge C1 or C2 with a minimum score of C, so A, B, or C. Um, for, uh, yeah, the thing with this is, is that in some cases you do not have to submit a language certificate. So, for example, if you have a passport from an English speaking country, such as the United States or Canada or Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, etc., you do not have to submit a language certificate. The same goes for if you obtained your full uh, secondary education, so high school education and an international curriculum. So, for example, if you're going to obtain the IB diploma, the American high school diploma with advanced placement subjects, in case you do the Cambridge uh, IGCSE exams, or in case you do the European baccalaureate, you're also exempted from the language um, requirement, yet you, didn't, uh, you then do not need to submit an English proficiency certificate. Um, English proficiency certificates cannot be older than two years at the time of your application. And you need to submit your language certificate together with your initial application. Uh, then for the master's programs, of course, the master's program requirements are a little bit different than those for the bachelor's. Um, as a general rule of thumb, you need to obtain, a, yeah, for admission, you need to obtain or have obtained a bachelor's degree in a related field um, to the program that you want to apply for. So, for example, if you want to study our master's program in accountancy, you need to get a bachelor's degree in at least business or economics or financial studies. Uh, in case you study, for example, linguistics or psychology, then chances are small that you will get accepted to our master's program in accountancy. On each of our master's program websites, you can find exactly per study program what diplomas we accept for admission. And in case you're uncertain whether or not you're eligible for admission, I really advise you to submit an application because in that way, our international admissions office can assess your application documents and can see whether or not you're eligible for admission. 
Similar for the, to the bachelor's programs, we ask for an English proficiency test, which cannot be older than two years at the time of your application. The language requirements are a little bit higher. Uh, we ask, uh, we accept the academic IELTS with a minimum overall score of 6.5 and minimum subscores of a 6. We accept the TOEFL internet based test with a minimum overall score of 90 and normally minimum subscores of 22. And again, we accept the Cambridge C1 advanced or C2 proficiency with a score of A, B or C. Again, certain exemptions are possible. For example, if you obtained your bachelor's degree in an English speaking country in English, for example, you obtained your bachelor's in Australia, the United States or um, United Kingdom, or in case you have a passport from an English speaking country. Then our bachelor, uh, sorry, our master's programs in the field of economics require a GRE with a minimum score of 160 on the quantitative part. You still need to do the full GRE test, but we pay, uh, pay specific attention to the quantitative part. Uh, programs in the field of business require a GMAT with a minimum score of 550. In case you're going to obtain a bachelor's degree from a partner university, and our partner universities can be found on the website, then you do not have to submit a GRE or a GMAT test. You are then exempted from this requirement. I hope this is clear. If not, please let me know. Um, Ada asks a very good question about credit transfer opportunities from a university from Turkey. Um, in general, it's not really possible to transfer credits um, to our university for admission. In case you think that you can get credit transfers, then I would really recommend you to first apply to the study program of your interest. And once you're conditionally admitted to a study program, contact the academic advisor of the study program. Academic advisor can discuss with the program director whether or not you can get credit transfers. And if this is possible, this is individually assessed by the program itself. So there are no strict rules or guidelines when it comes to that. Um, and uh, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Sagla, Kagla. Um, in case you're currently in your second year at university, you cannot just transfer to Tilburg University. You really need, normally you need to start from the beginning. Um, I would, again, recommend you to apply to the program of your interest and once you're conditionally admitted, discuss with the academic advisor whether or not it's possible to get some exemptions on courses that you already took in Turkey, for example. I hope I answered your questions correctly. If not, please, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, so in case you're interested in studying at Tilburg University and you checked whether or not you're going to meet the admission requirements, it's time for you to start your application. Please know that applying to Tilburg University is free of charge. We don't ask for any application fee. So in case you have any doubts, I would just recommend you to officially apply. Your first step is to register in StudyLink which is the Dutch national registration system for higher education. And in StudyLink, you fill in Tilburg University, your personal details, such as your first name, your last name, email address, home address, phone number, etc., And you select the program or programs of your interest. In StudyLink, you can select four universities and four study programs at the same time. It can be four study programs from different universities or from one university. Once you, for example, filled in Tilburg University, and uh, let's stick with the example of Melis, uh, you are interested in our bachelor's program in Cognitive Science and Artificial Intelligence. Once you selected Cognitive Science and Artificial Intelligence at Tilburg University, within 24 hours after you registered in StudyLink, you will receive your personal login details to our own university's application system, Osiris AMELT. And in Osiris AMELT, you are requested to upload your application documents. So only in OSIRIS, you're requested to upload your application documents. Um, each study program at Tilburg University has their own admission requirements, but also their own application uh, documents that we ask for. So please do your research, go to the program website of the program that you're interested in and see what documents you need to submit because per study program that might be different. And in case you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email or to call us so that you're sure what you have to do. Um, our bachelor's programs and our master's programs have different uh, application deadlines depending on what passport you have. Um, and in case you have double passport and one of the passports is European, then I would highly recommend you to apply with your European passport because then you have some benefits. Um, in case you're interested in a bachelor's program and you have a non-EU passport, then your application deadline is the 1st of April. 
In case you have an EU passport, then the application deadline is the 1st of May. The only exception is our bachelor's program in psychology, which is a program which has a selection and placement procedure in, in place. We call it the numerous fixes. It's a special kind of selection procedure. And because this has a special selection procedure, the application deadline is January 15th, regardless of what passport you have. Uh, for the master's programs, uh, again, it depends on which passport you have. In case you're interested in a February intake of a master's program, so in case you're, for example, interested in starting in February 2022, in case you have a non-EU passport, your application deadline was 1st of October, so unfortunately that application deadline has already passed. In case you have an EU passport, then your application deadline is December 1st. For the September intake, uh, April 1st is your deadline in case you have a non-EU passport. And in case you have an EU passport, then your application deadline is June 1st. Please make sure that you submit your application on time because otherwise it will not be um, assessed anymore by the International Admissions Committee. Um, our applications are based on ruling admissions. And this means that once you, once you submit your full application, it normally takes four to six weeks before you receive your conditional admission decision. So for example, if you you already start applying now, so for example, for cognitive science and artificial intelligence, you submit your application, you already know before the Christmas holidays whether or not you're conditionally admitted to the study program. So it gives a little bit of peace of mind. In case this is not clear, please let me know and I'm more than happy to elaborate more on the admission requirements or application procedure. So let's move on to cost of living and tuition fees, because I think for you, that's a very important topic to know more about. Um, similar to the application deadlines, what your tuition fees will be when you decide to study at Tilburg University really depend again on your passport. So for example, if you have an EU passport, your tuition fees differ between 20, yeah, are around 2,200 euros per academic year. In case you have a non-EU passport, it really depends on which study program you're interested in what tuition fees you have to pay. So for example, our bachelor's and master's program in theology have a tuition fees of 2,200 euros. Whereas our master's program in data science or our global law bachelor's program have higher tuition fees of between 10,000 and 14,900 euros. So in that sense, it really differs per study program what tuition fees you need to pay. And I would highly recommend you to go to tilburguniversity.edu slash tuition fees. And on our website, you see exactly per study program what you tuition fees you need to pay. Then a little bit more about estimated cost of living. Uh, normally, we say that you need between 800 and 1100 euros per month in order to get by comfortably. Um, accommodation normally varies between 350 euros and 700 euros, depending on what kind of yeah, room you're looking for. In case you do not mind sharing your kitchen and your living room with several students and you don't mind not living in a city center, then rent is around 350 euros per month, everything included, so gas, water, electricity, Wi-Fi. Um, in case you want to have your own studio and have everything for yourself, then prices go up. So then it might be that you're asked to pay between 600 and 700 euros per month. So in that sense already, accommodation really depends on how much you need to pay. Um, in general, you pay between th uh, 200 and 300 euros per month for food, drinks and transportation. Um, of course, if you like to go out for dinner a lot, go to restaurants, go to parties, then the prices go up. But if you like to cook, cook more at home, for example, then prices go down. Um, yeah, so this gives you hopefully a little bit of an idea of what costs you need to take into account. Um, of course, there are also unique costs, so costs that you only need to pay once. For example, your uh, visa procedure, your immigration, uh, it's around 200 euros uh, for one, so then you get your student permit. Um, you're definitely going to get a bike when you decide to study in the Netherlands, because in the Netherlands, everybody cycles. A second-hand bicycle costs around 70 euros, and for example, in case you're interested in doing sports at our sports center, then you pay around 140 euros for the full year. So these are more unique costs. And maybe when we do the live Q&A, I will ask Melissa to maybe share how she finances her studies, but also if she works part time uh, to, to give you an idea of what is possible. Then a little bit more about scholarships. Um, unfortunately, we do not offer any scholarships for our bachelor's programs. That's not really common in the Netherlands to offer bachelor scholarships. 
In case you're looking for external scholarships, I would recommend you to navigate to the Study in Holland website, studyinholland.nl, and there you will find tips and tricks how to look for external funding. Um, in case you're interested in a bachelor's program at Tilburg University and you're lucky to have an EU passport, then in the first year of your bachelor's program, you get a discount of 50% of your tuition fees. So then instead of paying 2,200 euros for your tuition fees in the first year, you only pay half, so around 1,000 euros. But this is only in case you also have an EU passport. So then a little bit more about the scholarships for our master's programs. Uh, we have several ones. In case you're interested in a master's program in the field of finance, risk management, economics, data science, or entrepreneurship at our university, then you can apply to the NN Future Matter Scholarship. If you navigate to tilburguniversity.edu slash scholarships, you see exactly which scholarships we offer, what the admission requirements are, and how to apply for the scholarship. Um, as a general rule of thumb, you need to have been conditionally admitted to Tilburg University in order to apply for a scholarship because a scholarship provider wants to make sure that you're going to start your studies at our university. Another very popular scholarship is the Jean Monnet Scholarship Program, and this is a full scholarship for excellent students enrolled in a master's program at Tilburg University. Um, again, if you want to know more, please navigate to the website. Uh, then we have Global Partner Scholarships. Uh, remember that I was talking about that you do not have to submit a GMAT or a GRE certificate in case you're going to obtain a bachelor's degree from one of our partner universities. Well, in case you're going to graduate from one of our partner universities, you're lucky again, because in that sense, you get a, a tuition fee discount of 25%. So instead of paying, for example, 14,900 euros for your tuition fees, you then pay around 10,000 euros tuition fees. And I put our partner universities on the slide so that you can get an idea whether or not you study at yet one of our partner universities. Uh, we always check whether or not you're going to obtain a relevant bachelor's degree. So you need to have a yeah, you need to obtain a bachelor's degree that is relevant to the study program that you want to study at Tilburg University. Um, I hope this is clear. Again, if not, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat because that's what we're here for. Um, before I want to delve into the live Q&A, um, some points of contact for you in case you have any questions after today or in case you want to receive more information. Um, in November, we're organizing two hybrid open days. So you can either decide to join our open day from the comfort of your own home, so from your laptop, or to visit our beautiful green campus and actually travel to the Netherlands to enjoy our campus. Our Bachelor Open Day will take place on Saturday, November 6th, and our Master Open Day will take place on November 20th. It's also a Saturday. During both Open Days, you can attend program-specific information sessions. You can chat with staff and students of each program. So in case you're doubting between different study programs, you can attend different information sessions and chat with staff and, uh, staff and students of all study programs. You can also chat with our international admissions office, with immigration coordinators, with academic advisors, the student dean. So in case you have any questions and would like to know more about our university, I highly recommend you to register for any of our open days. Um, in case you want to know more uh, specific about any programs and maybe course content, admission requirements, etc., then please um, navigate to our website and click on the program of your interest. And there you see exactly what the program entails and what the admission requirements are. In case you wanna receive a newsletter, please sign up for the newsletter via the link tilburguniversity.edu slash keep in touch. On our website, you can also download your own online bro brochure in case you want to know more, or in case you have any questions after today, you can always send us an email to question at tilburguniversity.edu. Um, I think that's very, yeah, it's very nice in case you want to, um, yeah, have any questions, talk to a representative or talk to an international student. So that was it from my side. Thank you so much. Um, I cannot pronounce this in Turkish. So thank you so much for your time and for your energy. Uh, I know it can be very tiring to listen to a presentation for a full hour. So great job that you kept going until the end. Um, I now want to give the floor to all of you and see if we can answer some questions live. And I see that Melissa is joining us as well. So thank you, Melissa. Let's see if there are any questions. I already saw a question coming in that I think was very relevant, was about housing. Uh, Melissa, can you maybe share tips and tricks how you found housing in Tilburg? Because it, indeed, it can be very difficult. 
Yes, I know it can be difficult. And last year I started looking like for accommodation. When I get my acceptance letter, I just started looking for accommodation. And when I came in the summer, I already had a place in a student house. Right now I'm living in a studio all by myself in a student complex. So in the middle of the year, I changed it. But before coming, I was sure I have a place. And I wanted to secure that. So I would recommend start looking early as soon as possible. Like you get your acceptance and then you should do it. And there are some specific places like Talent Square or Coburn Campus just for students in Tilburg. And also only for first year students. So you will be more uh, together with the first year students and you will start getting to know each other, which is better. And if you have any specific questions about housing, I might try, I can try to answer them. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's doable to find housing, but you just need to be on time and need to try different things, I think. Um, I don't see any questions coming in. So, Melissa, I have a question for you, because, of course, you lived in Turkey. Why did you decide to study in the Netherlands and why specifically at Tilburg? Why, why did you decide not to study in Turkey? And how was the process transitioning from Turkey to the Netherlands? Specifically, why Netherlands? Because I'm coming from an American high school in Turkey, so I was always uh, educated in English. So I want to study in English also for my bachelor. Uh, but I was too afraid to go to US and Netherlands is a great option for like both the quality and also for the prices. And I I applied to four different universities in the Netherlands. I got accepted to all. And then I came here, like looked at all the campuses and everything. And to be honest, I allowed my program and also the campus in Tilburg University because in the Netherlands, there are some city universities and like Tilburg uh, by itself is a beautiful green campus with all the programs and everything in it. So when you go to the university, you can see everyone from different uh, programs together, which was a like advantage for me. Yeah, I think I think that's what most students have. They tell me that they chose for Tilburg because of the campus, that everything is look like close to each other what i really like at our universities when that when you walk on campus you always see people that you know um you're not a number at our university professors know you by name it's a very i think safe and close-knit community um how was the application procedure for you was it difficult did you understand what you had to do did it take long before you received an admission decision I think it was pretty clear, like when you go to the specific web pages of the programs in the Tilburg University web page, it says like whatever you need. And I applied via study link and it was all clear. I only uploaded my documents and I remember I got my acceptance very early. So I was sure of where I'm going before the like Christmas actually. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions coming in. Um, I want to ask you a final question. Um, do you have any advice for the students that are now watching and that are in the middle of their study choice process? What advice can you give them or what tips can you give them? I would recommend like looking at the program you want, like where in detail, you can check the courses that are taught in Tilburg University in the web page and maybe you can look at the descriptions of the courses so that it, you will learn if you are interested or not. And also looking at the city itself because it's a beautiful uh, student city and you would love to study in Netherlands, I think. Learn, you don't have to worry about learning Dutch at all. And before coming here, I was very worried about that and I still don't know any Dutch in two years, so it's fine. And that's all I think. Okay, good. Yeah, and I just saw a question coming in. So thank you, Melissa, for sharing. And I think you gave very good advice to just check the programs, um, to really compare what program do you like and also what city do you see yourself living in? Of course, we like living in Tilburg, but we're used to the city. Maybe you li like a very metropolitan city and then Rotterdam University might be a better fit for you or Amsterdam. So not only compare the study programs, but also compare the cities and the universities that you're looking into. 
uh, Banu, uh, you ask a very good question about the University College. Uh, the University College is a college that is located on the major Tilburg University campus, but it offers a very specific American style study program called Liberal Arts and Sciences. And Liberal Arts and Sciences is a study program for students that are interested in various different topics. So that are not yet ready to commit to, for example, cognitive science and artificial intelligence or economics, but that want to study a lot of different topics. In a liberal arts and sciences program, you have a little bit more room to choose your own courses. So for example, at our University College Tilburg, you have one broad first year of this three-year bachelor's program in which you study both economics and philosophy and the social sciences and religious studies. And I think you have a lot of different cognitive neuroscience even comes to the fore in the study program. And after that first year, you choose one of, one of the five majors as your, as your major. So you can choose between business and economics, law and international contacts, uh, the social sciences, cognitive neuroscience, and which one am I forgetting? Oh, arts and humanities. So you have a little bit more time to choose what study program you're interested in. But even when you commit to your major, you can choose elective courses from another specialization. So in case you're interested in various different topics, then our liberal arts and sciences program offered by the university college might be a good fit for you. Uh, another thing that sets our university college apart from the rest of Tilburg University is that they have their own common room. So they have their own room where they can sit together, study, drink coffee, etc. And the, the class style is more discussion based. So even more than in a regular program at Tilburg University, and it's very small scale. So you will not have any lectures in which you sit in a lecture hall and listening to a professor. So it's very intense. Yeah, it's a very intensive way of education. And you need to like having a lot of discussions, um, giving presentations, voicing your opinion. So it's a little bit different. Um, I hope this answers your question. If not, let me know so that I can elaborate a little bit more on it. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any other questions that we can answer because we're here now. So this is your time to ask uh, questions live. Also, in case you wanna hear more about Melissa, her experiences, Maybe, Melissa, one thing I want to know, um, do you have a part-time job besides your studies or is it possible to work besides your studies? Uh, it, it is possible. Also, it's possible to work as a non dutch speaking person or a non eu person. Uh, I don't have a job because I'm also doing a board year in my association, sports association. Maybe I can tell more about the associations in Tilburg. Uh, we have more than hundreds I think yeah, I think yeah we have more yeah we have more than 25 student associations and every study program has a study association as well so in total I I'm not sure maybe 80 <laughs> like, there are so many sports associations I can tell you that uh, I'm in the dance association TSTV dance nation and it was a great way for me to meet new people especially my first year because we also had online education, hybrid education, and I wanted to pursue with my passion. And in the sports center, we have so many dance classes, all besides other sports classes like boxing, aerobics, yoga, plates. Like in the sports center, if you're a student, you can have so many classes. And Dance Nation is a part of that. And this year, I'm doing a board year as a activity manager in there. So I'm I can say I have a job, but not like a regular student job. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, so I want to thank you all so much for watching and thank you so much for sticking with us for a full hour. I know how tiring it can be to just listen and yeah, watch a, watch a video. Um, in case you have any questions after today, please feel free to send us an email via question at silverguniversity.edu. Yeah, and I want to wish you a nice yeah, evening. Maybe, Melissa, you have some final words you want to say? Uh, thank you so much like for listening. And if you have any questions, you can always ask us and reach out to us via email. Or you can find so many things from the university web page. I will only suggest that. <laughs> So Zainab, I think you can take over again. Yes, thank you very much for the great presentation, Yozin, and also for the answers. Also, thank you for the uh, participation, Melis. It was a really informative webinar for the attendees. 
And also I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. E, katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. E, Tilburg Üniversitesi ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adresinden yazılarına ulaşabilirsiniz. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. E, yarınki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. E, thank you very much again you guys. It was a pleasure to have in IFT Talks. Take care. Bye bye.